kick you up. You start the clock as, as I give you the, the time thank to you speak. Thank very much. Honorable Senators, thank you for the courtesy of allowing me to adjourn for the balance of my time on Tuesday evening. In continuing, with great appreciation for his acumen as a sponsor, I wish to address briefly two assertions made by Senator Cotter in his speech. First, he stated that, quote, a vast majority of the disabled community, I have counted, is comfortable with the structure of the bill before us and strongly supports its passage in its present form. Perhaps we are speaking to different disability rights experts. Second, Senator Cotter encouraged trust in the cabinet process and trust in Minister Qualtro to deliver far more than is required or even mentioned in this bill. As much as I respect Senator Cotter and Minister Qualtro and know that they speak from their lived experiences with disability and deep commitment as champions to better the lives of people with disability, I must question the wisdom of such a leap of trust as the rationale for this bill. The disability rights experts with whom I have consulted understand that a perfect bill or a perfect benefit cannot be achieved this time around. They all agree that this initiative by Minister Qualtro must be seen through with the best possible version of this bill, finalized and enacted in this session of Parliament, and this bill must not die. But their political pragmatism, born of necessity, does not excuse us from our duty to give this bill our full consideration and to make achievable, critical improvements. Yes, this is a framework bill, but it's not a rights-based framework as much as it is aspirational. Briefly, the glaring omissions and shortcomings in this bill include the bill may never lift anyone out of poverty. There is no minimum standard in the benefit. There is no requirement for the regulations, which are core to any positive change, to be done by the time the Act is operational. There is no deadline for payments to be dispersed. The benefit disqualifies thousands of disabled people by their age, clearly discriminatory. The bill lacks transparency and therefore it lacks accountability because it puts decision-making processes behind closed doors. The bill makes an ultimatum, not a real choice. Given the stakes at hand, it is troubling that this bill does not build more on Canada's international human rights commitments, principally Article 28 in the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, addressing, quote, adequate standard of living and social protection. Strengthening this bill from a rights-based approach will yield a stronger legislative framework, and as we saw in the other place, this can be done without stalling the legislative process, if the government wills it so. Dr. Nancy Hansen, Director of the Interdisciplinary Master's Program in Disability Studies at the University of Manitoba, summarized this approach as, quote, a charity ethic to support disabled Canadians, an overarching colonial aspect of service provision for disabled people that maintains people in marginalized positions. It is residual legislation. It's better than nothing, but a once-in-a-generation fix should be done better than this. Similarly, Senator Seidman, in her excellent analysis of the bill, raised important questions of moral and ethical compulsion versus mere legal obligation to persons with disabilities. As noted in the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, people with disabilities who also identify as members of minority groups are subject to, quote, multiple or aggravated forms of discrimination, end of quote. There are numerous relevant human right commitments which Canada has made that should influence our review, but I'll list just two more. The UN Universal Declaration on Human Rights, Article 25, Sub 1, everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for health and well-being. And the UN Sustainable Development Goals, Goal 10, is to reduce inequality within and among countries, and the Sub 10-2 target is, by 2030, empower and promote the social, economic, and political inclusion of all, 
irrespective of age, sex, disability, race, ethnicity, origin, religion, or economic or other status. And entrenched within the Canadian Constitution, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms unequivocally underlines the concept of substantive equality, to which I note direct references made in the preamble to C-22. In R versus CAP, the Supreme Court reiterated this concept of substantive equality as, quote, the promotion of equality that entails the promotion of a society in which all are secure in the knowledge that they are recognized at law as human beings equally deserving of concern, respect, and consideration. There is an additional sense of urgency in protecting the fundamental human rights of persons with disabilities in this bill. Applications and requests were made as a response to struggles with poverty increase. Bill C-22 does not guarantee that any persons with disabilities will be brought out of poverty. It does not guarantee that any dollar amount will be dispersed in a timely manner. And, put bluntly, it doesn't guarantee the existence of the Canadian disability benefit at all. Life-reducing poverty among persons with disabilities has always been with us, but there is now an additional sense of urgency. Since March 2021, uh, Canada has expanded MAID to be available to people who are not at the end of life, to die due to their disability-related suffering and who meet other eligibility criteria. Widespread social and economic deprivation has created conditions in which dying appears to be the only answer for some persons with disabilities to escape poverty. The um, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion, Erect Kuzmerzik, acknowledged this reality. He said, living with dignity is a far-off hope for many in these circumstances, and some persons with disabilities have unfortunately and tragically chosen to apply for MAID in the past year, with poverty being the key driver. The sad fact is that eligibility for MAID has expanded faster than have the social supports that would lift persons with disabilities out of poverty and allow them to live with dignity, end of quote. Former Chief Human Rights Commissioner for Ontario, Professor Emerita Catherine Frazee, described this alarming aspect of MAID. We dial 911. We pull you back from the ledge. And yes, we restrain you in your moment of crisis. Autonomy be damned. We will get to the heart of the problem that drove you out into the woods, and we will beckon you back toward a life that is bearable. Unless, of course, your suffering is medical or disability related, then, and only then, there will be a specific pathway to assisted death. Death on demand, essentially. As we heard from Senator Mavilja-Sin today, there is a troubling connection between MAID and surprising numbers of people living with disabilities saying clearly that they are now choosing MAID because they cannot live their lives with dignity and adequacy, because they are kept poor. This is why high and welcome aspirations in Bill C-22 unmatched by required resource adequacy, have disability advocates telling us that the focus needs to be placed on strengthening the insufficient framework of this bill. It is not an either-or proposition. Advocates are not suggesting that all details must be worked into the bill. There is no need, nor are they calling for overly prescriptive legislation here. Professor Hansen, Professor Frazee, lawyers David Lepofsky and Robert Latanzio and their many colleagues are experts, and they are seasoned advocates in our democracy. They have to be. They well know that the majority of all legislation is fine-tuned and developed via regulation. They are not being naive in their assessment of essential changes that are needed for this framework to truly bring positive changes to the lived reality in the nitty-gritty of daily lives. Put bluntly, C-22 is too hollow, too void of direction. There is barely any scaffolding upon which a strong, durable framework can be built. Here are four 